You know, my grandmother wore a hearing aid. It aided in her hearing. And I know that our generation is going to be the one that take the stigma out of that because I know myself, being that I was at so many rock and roll concerts, that, um, yeah, that I have lost some hearing. So good morning, good morning, everybody. I was taking out my little earbuds. But notice we're so used to seeing people walking around with earbuds in their ears. Um, nobody's going to know if you're listening to, like, you know, the Beatles or you actually have an ear, uh, a hearing aid. <laughs> so I just say that, and I also say that to the youngsters who are tuning in. Your body's going to change on you. Your body's going to change on you. So work with it. Don't fight against it, okay? Like, I don't say what I mean is, is do things so that you can maintain an area. I, I just got off a coaching call with somebody. This is why it's fresh on my mind. But do things that allow you to maintain that kind of quality of life that you want, even when your body starts to go like this. So, tales from the dark side. <laughs> tales from the postmenopausal woman in your life. But I'm telling you, it isn't as scary as you think. So good morning. Good morning, okay? Kate Kager, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, I just showed up. I, I, did a, I, I just got off of some coaching with somebody. And one of the things I thought was fun was we were talking about this whole, um, the full moon thing that happened last night. And we did some math, and they said it won't happen for another 13 years. And realizing how old you're going to be the next time that moon comes around. Now, I like to say the time's going to go by anyway. What do, I want to, what do I want to do with it? What kind of person do I want to be in 13 years? In 13 years, I will be in my 70s, people. I will be in my 70s. I don't know how old you are. But what I want to suggest is what kind of person do you want to be in 13 years? And start now walking towards that. Strange thing is to me, and this is this is the way our human bodies age, and I know I'm jumping into the deep end of the pool, but this is what's in my mind, so hopefully it'll help you. For decades, it's like there's like this kind of the bell curve where you're a little kid and then you grow and then you go through puberty and then you're like 20s, teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, and like half of my 50s kind of felt about the same physically. Menopause. Just like puberty on this end, menopause on this end, your body changes whether you want it to or not. I didn't ask for these boobs when I was in sixth grade. No, I've carried them around with me all my life. Now I'm carrying them around and they're a little bit lower than they were when I was 12. But your body's gonna change and let's wrap this into decluttering. Yeah, 79 or gone. Yeah, okay, so before you're gone, how, what what's some shit you want to do with your life now i say this because i want to also wrap this into decluttering because when we age we need to make sure that our home is set up for us and i don't necessarily want to be a person who has you know a wheelchair i don't want to have to ne negotiate those types of things so what can you do now to kind of make your home something you can age gracefully in okay well, the home you want to just be able to have space. Notice that the big thing that's going to be different is space in your house to navigate, to not be tripping over things, to not be bumping into stuff. If you, if you start to fall, is there something you can grab onto? Or maybe you've also worked on your core so you can reset. But setting up your home to help it help you to live more easily in your home can happen at any age, okay? It should happen at any age. The home I wanted when I was in my 20s is pretty much the home I have now, if I think about it. Um, but I know when I'm in my 70s, I may need to have, you know, a chair, you know, like just, you know, a, a banister or something, the old timey thing. So I just offer that what we're doing now is your home is a place. Hey, good morning, Carla. So Carla, your home is a place that you want to hang out in. And when you're there, it's easy to hang out in there physically and mentally and just kind of, um, you know, as I say, you've got your surface stored and sentimental. And so when I talk about it, it's like, how does it look? How does it, how does it function? Functionality in your home. 
How do you function in your home? Is it easy for you to live in your home right now? Can you easily find the things you're looking for? Can you easily use them because they're in good condition? And can you easily then put them away because there's a home they're supposed to go to? The ease, I'm all about easy, I am. But the other thing too is with the functionality is, you know, is it safe for you physically? Is your physical, does your clutter affect your physical health? You know, are you tripping over things? Are you smelling stinky smells? Are you inhaling mold? Is it wicked dusty so you get an asthma attack? You know, there's so many ways that decluttering your home improves your life. Now, I don't feel like being getting into like, oh, look at me, I'm going to sell you on decluttering. I will share with you, though. Man, oh, Manischewitz. My house has never felt better. Oh, my gosh, you guys, we worked on the basement this weekend, and... We all have x-ray specs, okay? Remember those things in the back of the, um, the, the comic books? Like, ooh, you can see through somebody's, you know, whatever. But we know, I know right here, sitting on this first floor of my house, I can picture what my basement looks like now, and I feel better. Because I'm like, ah, we, not, we, we took down those tables that had boxes on them. The stuff that was in boxes went into totes that are nicely labeled. We also got rid of a bunch of stuff. It just feels good to live in a home that is decluttered and when you know where stuff is and you know you can easily get it. And knowing that I'm not gonna re-clutter my house is a freaking game changer. I used to clutter up my home with stuff that I brought in from the outside. I used to, I feel like I'm doing, given like a testimonial of this is how I used to be and then something happened and then I changed. But it's true and I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this with you because you may not believe that there's another side to your clutter. You may believe, oh, this is how it is. I'm stuck. This is it. Fixed mindset. This is how it is. This is how my body is. This is how my brain is. No. 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 Boop. It can be different. It can be different and you can do something about it. You know, what's getting in your way are your thoughts. And I'm going to dive right into it because user 5949 says, I have clothes I could get rid of. I could. I'm concerned. Notice the feeling of concern. Let me backtrack too. Let me introduce myself. I always forget to do this at the beginning. Good morning. My name is Beth. My name is Karen. Uh, my, <laughs> my name is Beth. I am, I am a decluttering life coach. Um, and my decluttering life coaching is called Destination Decluttered. I have a mailing list and I love doing one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching with people. And what I often start with is just look at this, okay? I folded a piece of paper in half. I do this all the time when I'm coaching. There's a line right here. On the one side of the line is fear and all of the things under the umbrella of fear. I joke, remember that umbrella of fear TV show. But over here, we've got the wonderful umbrella of love and all of the things that go underneath that. Now, this may seem a bit woo-woo to you, but I totally am wicked practical as well. So notice, user 5949, has a thought I or has a has a fact I have clothes I could get rid of statement however I have concern about when do I need them I have afraid that it's too much money okay notice the concern is under the umbrella of fear this is how we this is the fear or love decide who you want to be influencing you if you are afraid that I, if I get rid of my clothes, I won't have them, and then I'm going to have to spend money to buy them, notice that's where you're coming from, and let's start there. So, okay, are the clothes you could get rid of, you think you might need them in the future. Part of you is abstractly thinking, well, what if I need it in the future? Pull out one item of that clothing that part of you says I could get rid of it, and the other part says no. This is tension. I love this. I got this little ropey thing. I feel like I should do magic tricks. I got this out of my, my hoodie. There's tension. Should I, I? Part of me, I could get rid of it, but then I'm concerned. There's tension. Okay? Here, let me see if you can see my hands here. There's tension. There's stress on this rope because this one's pulling this way and this one's pulling that way. Which hand do you want to win? Which one makes you feel better? Feeling fearful or feeling loveful? How about this? When practically do you think you're going to wear that sweater? If you think you're going to wear it, keep it. But then wear it. 
Make a plan to wear it. But if you think, you know what, I'm going to trust in the universe that if I need a spangly, sparkly dress for an event, I'm going to choose to believe that I can buy one and I'm going to fucking love it. And I'm going to have the money for it. Which one do you want to win? I am team love. So I'm always thinking the thing that makes me feel better because when I feel better, I do better. Okay? And notice the stress. <clears throat> Look at the stress. But notice there's tension. When you want to keep it, no big deal. When you want to let it go, no big deal. But when there is a tension between the two, as the clash so insightfully said, should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go now? Notice the stress that your clutter gives you, okay? Once you notice there's tension, you can then decide which one do I want to believe, the fear or the love? And when you believe in, I, you know, you believe in the love, believe in life after love, then you can let go of the fear and then there's no tension. Dudes, look at me. I'm like all life coachy today. <laughs> but notice, when you, when you feel fearful, you're hanging on to stuff. When you're feeling in love, you're more likely to release it. Oh, that doesn't matter. Remember when you were besotted with somebody, you're like, oh, that doesn't matter. Whatever world, I'm just, I'm in love with this person over here. I'm in love with myself. When you're in love with yourself, I just saw the word self right here. When you're in love with yourself, so much other stuff doesn't even matter. Okay? I love it. One, Loopy says, one thing, in, one way in, one in, one out. Everything has its placement. Love it. Okay. Um, Kate, okay. Basement in our last house was so clean. The kids played there. This one is broken up and cluttered. This one is different. Maybe your kids are old enough that they're not playing there anymore. Maybe you don't have a clear idea of what you want that basement to be, so it's just, it's kind of sitting there. My basement's kind of messy, unlike the rest of my house. It has some stuff in there that is different. We use it for different things. I literally moved boxes of books that I wrote onto a different shelf, and I said, I'm never going to sell these books anymore. They are years out of date, and so what can I do to remove them? The, fa the basement is a different place now. Okay, and yeah, Briggle totally says poverty mindset, lack, as we call it in the life coaching biz. There's nothing wrong with coming from a lack or poverty mindset, except if you allow that to influence who you are right now in a way that doesn't make you feel good. I know people who have a little bit of money who feel like they're totally rich, and I, have, I know people who have millions of dollars that still feel like they live in the poorhouse. You can choose what you think about your clutter and how it makes you feel. You can choose that. You can. Okay? All right? Um, yeah. T Prada 1 says, I lost the money when I bought an item rather than thinking about when I discarded it. Did I make sense? Totally. Totally. Yes. You should think, <laughs> you should think of um, the losing of the money when you're about to exchange the money for the object. That's when you should be concerned about, am I going to regret this? Am I going to enjoy this? And feel good about your purchase. Feeling good about the purchase may allow you to realize, I don't need to purchase this at all. I just wanted to pretend I was that kind of person who was wearing a spangly dress and doing my share. Oh, yeah. Gypsies, tramps, and thieves. <laughs> I used to watch the Sonny and Cher show when I was growing up. Oh, my God, I freaking loved it. She was gorgeous. She is gorgeous. But thank you. That's my share impression. <laughs> Just notice, you guys, and me included. Again, this is not a hierarchical, top-down type of me saying it to you. I am in the, I am in the pool with you. We all have thoughts that cause us to feel a feeling, and when we feel feelings, we do a thing. If we are in fear, we tend to be self-protective and holding on and clinging on to things, and not paying attention, not caring about other people, just ourselves, and be making decisions based on that. There's another side to the story, the rest of the story. There's like the, as I like to say, there's like the steno book. You fold the paper in half. You get your steno book. On the one hand, you get your fear. On the other hand, you get your loves. Look what I got right here. You got stuff I love on this side here. Even noticing that can be mind-blowing. 
it took me decades to realize that I had a choice in a lot of the stuff I did. I was choosing to be the victim. I was choosing to blame other thing, people for my problems. When I realized that that still wasn't getting me what I wanted, I said, okay, wait a minute. I might have something to do with this, right? And you can do something about it. So one great Grammy. I bet you are a great Grammy. I had a great Grammy. Actually, it's funny. We actually had great Grammy Smith. It just came with the business because she was my mother's mother's mother. My mother's mother's mother. Yeah, she was great. I've been married for 44 years. Congratulations. Two-story house. I'm a sentimental person. Good. So am I. Um, too much clutter. I cry and eat. Okay. Let me help you with this Grammy. All right. First of all, if you're a Grammy, well, actually, no, technically people my age are Grammys. I'm always pretty much 30 years old in my head, even though I'm about to be about to be 60. No, no, no. I'm got. I just turned 58. I get two years. Notice what you're doing to try to make yourself feel better in your life. You are crying and eating. The crying makes you feel sad. You eat to make yourself feel better. I do it. We all do it. Snacks and good tasting food wouldn't be invented unless we did that. But notice, if you have too much clutter, you can do something about it. If the clutter you have is dragging you down, you can choose something. Now, here's the deal with sentimentality. I know this myself, that there is still that layer of surface stored and sentimental within your sentimental stuff. Everything you have in your house, everybody, not just great Grammy, everything in your house tells you a story. Is it a story you like to hear? Is it a story you need to have examples of over and over and over and over and over again? Or could you decrease the amount of times that you're like, yep, my husband owned that, and he owned this, and he owned that, and he owned that? Notice the stuff that doesn't make you feel good. That's the stuff you start with. Let's eliminate that, you know? Um, uh, I kind of lost my train of thought because I was thinking of picking this up again. But notice, your, your clutter is not making you feel good. Your clutter is a struggle between what you want to keep, what you want, what you have, and what you want. Where you are and where you want to go. There's a bit of a tension there when there's a struggle. Part of you wants to hold you back. Part of you wants to move forward. There's tension in between those two things. If you don't like where you are, you can go somewhere else. And if you're excited about it and you want to do it, you move forward. And look, there's no tension. You just start moving forward, you know. But just notice you're doing things. Everybody, I was thinking about this today. I went to, I went to Wegmans yesterday. I typically rarely go shopping anymore. I used to spend a lot of time shopping, thrifting, externally looking for things to make things to make me feel better. I used to do it. Yesterday, I went to Wegmans just to pick up a few boring things, literally like low-fat yogurt and a giant loaf. This is what I call a, a giant loaf of toilet paper because we were running low. And I walked down a, an aisle that I typically don't do, do, which is like the whole kitchen gadget section. My eye saw something. It caught my eye. It was colorful. You know how I feel about clutter. I mean, excuse me, color. I love clutter. Cov excuse me. I love color. And I saw something that I said, ooh, that's colorful. Do I need it? Now, I actually took a while to think about it. It was a thing that makes it easier for you to wash your fruit and store it. Brush your breath, brush your breath, brush your breath with dentine, wash your fruit, wash your fruit, wash your fruit and store it. And I thought, okay, now wait a minute. I do eat blueberries in the morning. It's one of the few fruits that my body doesn't mind. I also know that every time I get a new thing, I bring out the giant colander and I do this and I have to wash the colander. So I thought, you know what? This might be a good investment in my money. I, I think this is going to make my life easier. So I bought it. But notice all of the thought that went into me purchasing that thing, thinking it was going to make my life better. I bet your house is filled with a lot of stuff. You don't even know how it got there. You don't even know the story behind it. Notice these things. Okay. Notice these things. Um, yeah, Connie is saying, I have people that keep bringing me stuff from their home. They're trying to declutter and you look like an easy mark. Craft stuff. I tell them I don't sew. Notice, everybody, you have a hand that's hanging on to stuff. You have a hand that's releasing stuff. And you have a hand that can say, thank you, but no. Boundaries, people, boundaries. They can make your life better. What's that old saying? Good fences make good neighbors. 
You can say, thank you, but no, I do not sew. Do not bring that into my house. Go to the goodwill with it, okay? So notice too, this is a really important thing. Great Grammy, I love that you're on this call because I can help you with this because we do this all the time. Notice you're saying, it's too overwhelming. I just don't do anything. Yeah, yeah. When the human body and nervous system is feeling overwhelmed, it's too much. We shut down and we don't do anything. I can't even, as the Bitmoji used to say. Recognize that. Recognize when you are feeling overwhelmed. When you are feeling overwhelmed, this is how I like to explain it, so maybe this will help you if you've never heard me say this before. Overwhelm has the word over in it. It means I'm in over my head. I am drowning. There's too much. I'm looking at it too big. Like I'm looking at, instead of just what's in front of me right now, today, I'm looking at the whole world, you know, oops, do I have it upside down? I do. I look at it, the whole world and I feel like I've got the, you know, it's, oh, there's too much. That's okay. You can drop it down. Grammy, I want you to think of the word down. The next time you're feeling overwhelmed and we can all do it right now. You guys want to help great Grammy? I do. Let's all calm down our nervous systems. So what I do is, first of all, I'll sit down. It's kind of like I'm on my car. I pull to the side of the road and I stop. I breathe down. I breathe down. I slow down my breathing. I slow down my exhales. I inhale. I breathe down into the bottom of my lungs. I just use the word down all over the place. I quiet down. I go to a place that's quiet. I put in earbuds if I need to. I maybe look down and I soften my focus. Notice I feel like I'm settling down. I quiet down. All right? If you're in fight or flight, if you're in overwhelm, you're not making the best decisions. You're just trying to survive. You can do something about the feeling of overwhelm. And look what I, we're doing right now. I'm quieting down how I think. I, my, I'm quieting down the way I'm speaking. I'm slowing down. I'm quieting, slowing, breathing, settling, all the downs, as I like to say. When you start to feel better, when you start to feel not so overwhelmed, there's nothing wrong here, I'm not gonna get bitten by a saber-toothed tiger, that is where you can start to say, okay, I'm out of overwhelm. Now I can start to do something. Now the overwhelm may come up. I don't even know what to do. Shh, it's okay. You know what to do with certain things. You know that trash goes in the trash barrel. You know that recycles go in the recycle bin. You know that you have stuff right away, Grammy, even though the stuff are in your basement, whoever's talking about your basement, you have things in your basement that if you went down there today, you could easily, notice the word easily, put them in a container to give them away and um, donate them. Start there. What you're going to notice is that's a layer of clutter. Another layer of clutter is going to be stuff that's going to make you feel feelings. Don't necessarily start with the top stuff. Okay. Um, you can calm down, but everybody, 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 start with your body. Start with yourself. Start with your nervous system. If you're not feeling good physically or mentally or spiritually or elect electronically or e electrically, nervous systemly, all the insides, if you're not feeling good, start there. Do things to make yourself feel better. Maybe you're feeling like, I got to hydrate. I got to replenish because I'm feeling depleted. Okay? And when you feel better, you will, you will um, do better. Sorry. All right, Ellen has got to go one step at a time. It's so true. And we're not even in AA. All right? Um, so notice you can do something. Here's a fun thing. I thought about this the other day. So, so see this thing? I got into Palm Springs, and I'm sure we've always seen it. Our internal world is kind of like this thingy right here, right? This little kind of faux snow dome type dealy. Every day, our, our, what did they used to call them? Back in the day, they'd be like your, not your, ah, there's something, I, I'll think of it. Your fluids are in a different percentage. You know, I get pee in my bladder. I have to empty it out. I am feeling hungry. I need to eat. 
I'm feeling stressed out. I, I want to calm down. Every day you're going to feel a little bit different. It's a balance. This is balancing. Notice those little guys on the floating around. Actually, one of them stuck in the trees. There we go. When you're feeling overwhelmed, it's like, whoa, okay, there's, I'm, I'm out of balance. Whoa, I'm trying to shake them up here. What you need to do then? Well, this didn't work as well as I thought. I thought it was going to be like a snow dome. But you're going to need to, okay, how about this? We'll do this. I'm out of balance like this. Whoa, I'm feeling, I'm feeling too much of this and not enough of that. Okay, slow down, calm down, quiet down. That's what you do. That's what you do on your insides every day. Okay? Sorry, you guys. You doing all right? Actually, I want to get that one over to the other. Okay, see? Just so you know, I made sure the whole flock was together. It wasn't one sad, lonely one over here. But I digress. Now, Shelly Smith says, my grandma would give me stuff and I would say thank you and give it to Goodwill. She was a sweetheart. Yeah, your grandmother was trying to declutter in her own way. She felt safe. She felt it felt easy for her to give something to you versus donating it herself. I love, Shelly, that you noticed that you didn't want some of the stuff she wanted and you could easily donate it yourself. You didn't get guilted into hanging on to something you didn't want. <laughs> Daisy Dog says, how do you know if the world is upside down? It's a feeling, but know that you can turn the world right side up for you. Okay. Um, yeah, DFW Suburban Mom says, the two people I always say yes to are my mother and my mother-in-law because I can declutter their stuff now. Yeah, if they are willing, people, if you have people in your life who want to get rid of stuff now and you know that you're going to have to clean up their stuff after they're gone, say thank you and give it to bring it in but you don't need to keep it that's a difference if you want it keep it in your house if you don't want it say thank you and then do what shelly did donate it somewhere else start to pile it up even in a place that you say i don't even want this stuff okay my aunt told me it doesn't matter what it is take it so she can get rid of it yeah i'm doing that with my mother if my mother is willing to let go of something i will take it now the funny thing is then it goes to my sister's house she's got a lot of storage so she says yeah just bring it to me and i'll deal with it later but then other life things get in the way so notice when you say yes to something that you, you but it's notice when it's only temporary what's the easiest way you can get it and then release it Cap capture and release okay i love it i love that there's rich aunt melly from palm springs palm springs is my happy place i love palm springs i was there twice this year and i look forward to going there as often as possible okay yeah happy cop cat mom was talking about the biorhythms yeah i was thinking more of your your fluids or your you know there's some wicked old timey thing there all right um i love it vicky says when i get your live notifications i insert the earbuds and get to work you know why inserting earbuds you're 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 focus you're not getting distracted about all the stuff around you you're putting in earbud buds you're hearing good words from me because i'm always sharing the good words and you're feeling better while you're doing whatever you're doing because you have a nice steady stream of good words in your brain and that has a nice lasting effect i love that um i love that when i show up i can help make it easier for you to declutter but I'll be honest with you, my real goal for you, though, is to help you do this on your own. So if I never showed up again, that you would know what to do without me being there, because I've taught you skills that you can go live a life you love without me. But I'm here right now teaching you those skills. So just notice that I love it and I'm flattered that you show up and you say, I do good things when you're here. I want you to do good things for yourself when I'm not here. Okay. So let me share with you. Let me treat, treat, train you, teach you. That's where I got jammed up. Let me share with you what's worked for me and gotten me to a life I love so that you can have it too. And then you can tell two friends and so on and so on. Like the Fabergé organic shampoo commercial. Okay. Now Kim Marie says, why do I feel like I need to have my house in order even though it's not a mess before I start a project? I don't know, but notice. Notice your thoughts, people. Notice if I said to Kim, why do I, first of all, she said, I feel like there's a feeling generated in your body that says, I can't do this until I, I can't do this until I do this. The all or nothing. 
I have this feeling. And the feeling, if we walked up and realized where did this feeling come from, it came from a thought, some words in my head. Some words in my head who say, I need to have my house in order before I start a project. You have a thought in your head. You wrote it down, words, in your head, in the comments. That thought causes you to feel a feeling. Ooh, I can't start. I'm not going to start the project because I need to get my house in order. I love the fact, though, that part of you is like busting yourself. Backseat drivers keep you stuck. Backseat driver thoughts of, you can't do that until you do this. I love that your co-pilot, the way I like to call it, me, is like, it's not a mess. It's not a mess. I could start that project, but I'm choosing to believe that I can't start it because my house is a mess, even though it's not really a mess. Isn't this interesting? I find it fascinating. We talk to ourselves in our heads all the time. We are either encouraging ourselves or discouraging ourselves. Or, you know, singing a song from the 80s. Choose the thought you want to have. Choose the one that makes you feel better. Okay? You know? Um, yeah, the humors. Thank you, Ms. Crentis. That's what I was looking for. Your humors. Yes, I love it. Thank you. Okay? Um... Yeah, adrenaline, adrenaline. Yeah, that's the fight or flight. That's the, that's the, ah, that's their survival mode. If you are living your day-to-day -day life in survival mode, your humors, your, your energies are all out of whack. Let's get them in whack, okay? Let's get them in whack so you feel better. Adrenaline is helpful in those instances when you need it, but when you live in that heightened state of freaking out all the time, it can have detrimental effects all over the place. So let's do something. Uh, user 5942 says there should be an AA for clutterers or does it exist? Uh, it probably does. I consider myself, we're having a group session right here. I'm helping you with this, you know. Um, Gana X says trying to clean out, get my husband on board with cleaning out. I don't want my kids to have to deal. All right, so notice Gana X, you said two things. This is what I'm all about too because I will share with you. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. I have a 10 session program that people pay for and there are people that I've worked with for almost a year now just continuing with 10 session packages. This is something I do all the time and Gana X, notice when you said, I'm trying to get my husband on board because I don't want my kids to have to deal with this. Where are you in that scenario? Where are you? I see that you're trying to get somebody else to do something to help somebody else, but what about you? What about you? I am team you, everybody on this call right now, I am here for you, not your husband, not your kids. I could give a shit about them. I want to want what's in it for you. What can you do to get yourself on board with the decluttering? Are you perfect in your decluttering? I'm not, and I get fucking paid to do this. Pardon me, I drop F-bombs when I get excited. I was in my basement this weekend with my husband trying to get him on board, it wasn't easy wasn't easy. I did it. And I'm an expert. What I offer is what's in it for you? Why do you want to declutter? Do you have clutter you need to deal with? And I say this with love, not accusingly. I say this because start with yourself. Learn what motivates you. Learn a skill you can share with others. Learn, follow, lead by example. Okay. So get yourself involved with this. Not out. Oh, Take a U-turn, as I like to say. You're going out, you're looking for stuff, do a U-turn, like the little sign says. Go back to you and say, what about me? What's going to motivate me to declutter? And if it is, I don't want my kids to have to deal. How about this? That's cool. How about you don't want to live in a cluttered home right now? Never mind your kids. How about you now? I'm sick of living in a house that's messy. I want it clean. Now, Chris says, I would feel guilty to take it and then donate. It feels like false pretense. Okay, notice guilt. Okay, if you feel that way, you're going to guiltily hang on to stuff. That's your choice. That is completely your choice. Guilt, however, has you hanging on to things that you don't want to begin with. But notice that you're doing this for the greater good. You are making it easy for that person to release their items, but you're also taking yourself into account, saying, I don't want this thing, but I'm gonna help them. Oh, I think we just got something delivered. I don't know if we, I got something, de you know, I got something delivered, listen to me. I don't want this, but I'm going to help that person by taking it, but I'm not going to keep it in my house. You're doing it because you love that person. You want to help them. Okay. So yeah, 
Notice Kim Marie, I'm backing up to you because I'm catching up on the thoughts. Good morning, Erin. Um, yes, it really holds me back. I'm holding back. I'm holding myself back from getting things done that I enjoy because I have this these words in my head that say, can't do this until you do that, all or nothing. I call bullshit on that, okay? I really do because it just doesn't get you the all. It keeps you staying in the nothing. Notice you're not doing it, you know? Amalia is saying, I just went back on ADHD meds to help combat the fight or flight ADHD paralysis. Cool. Some people need medication for this. Some people can get medication for this. Do what works for you. I don't judge. I say if you're finding something that helps you get the stuff done you want to get done and live the life you want to live, feeling good about it, do it. Do it. I love that you did that. I hope it helps. I truly do. <laughs> there we go. Jess from LA. I'm giving you a romper room shout out. And she's standing up in, in, in Destination Declutters, and not, not so anonymous. My name is Jess from LA, and I'm a recovering clutterer with Beth's help. Yeah. You know what I call myself? I call myself a recovering collector. And when I say that to my collector friends, they laugh because they know what it's like. Yeah. All right. Um... Yeah, Mar 6804. I don't know if you've ever been diagnosed with ADHD, but one of the te one of the things that people with ADHD is, and I work with them, and I, I work with them, I'm married to them, and they're in my family. I probably have a strain of it myself. Is saying, I have a hard time if I don't have someone with me. They don't have to do anything, just be with me. What we call in the biz, and that's ADHD slash decluttering, is, um, is uh, excuse me, we call things a bunch of things, is body doubling. I did that with my husband this weekend. I sat in, I, I was working alongside him doing my own stuff when he was going through his things. And then I literally spent an hour sitting on the basement stairs, looking at TikTok, checking things out, just sitting there while he was going through his stuff. I would like to think that that allowed him, that was part of what made it easier for him to go through and spend an extra hour going through his stuff. Not me judging him. I was there if he needed me, but most of the time I was quiet. Notice what you need in order to get things done and how can you do that? How can you get somebody be, be there with you? Mars 6804, I don't go to people's houses. I work on Zoom and um, I don't go to your house. However, my TikTok lives. You could pop one on when you know when it's happening, put your earbuds in. You could declutter surface clutter. You could also, when I don't do my TikTok lives, because I, I do that when I travel, I go, go off the digital grid. I have over 200, not to overwhelm you, but just to say there's plenty of them, so you rarely have to repeat yourself, recorded TikTok lives that are free and open to the public on YouTube at Destination Decluttered. You can pop one of them on. I can keep you company, okay? Notice these things. You can do something about it, though. You can. This is going to be my overarching thing. If something bugs you, you can do something about it. What that thing is depends on what it is. I can help you with that. Okay? Interesting. Mary says, I surprised myself. I almost said yes to a puppy this week, so I cleared a several rooms fast. Mm-hmm. Notice. Interesting. Saying yes to a puppy, that's clutter that's going to last you almost 15 to 20 years. Yeah, Sarah Larkin, you hit the nail on the head. I think you're right. There can be a safety in obtaining extra things. And it can be really hard to let go because if you don't feel safe with less stuff. The key is to make yourself feel safe. And when you feel safe, you can more easily let go of the extra. I'm not saying the all or nothing. Trust me, I'm not saying give it away, give it away, give it away now. I'm not saying all of it. I'm just saying the stuff that you don't like. Calming down your nervous system Eat enough to just let go, let it go, let go of the shit you don't want. And it's the stuff in your house, it's the stuff in your life, it's the thoughts in your head. Okay? And then feeling safe, feeling good about the decisions you're making. And if you're not feeling good about it, postpone that. But then do go back to it. Don't avoid it. Avoiding is different than postponing. Saying, no, nah, I, don't, I don't know what to do with this. It feels good. I'm going to put it there aside. I'm going to revisit it later. Okay? Now, Ponytail Girl Vintage, Pyrex and Tupperware issue. Well, I probably shouldn't tell you that Pyrex Fest is happening at Joe Retro in Haverty Race, Maryland. I think it's September 28th. I used to go there to shop. 
Then I sold my books. Then I helped my sister. We are all in cert a certain process of acquiring and living with and getting rid of. So notice you have an issue with Pyrex and Tupperware. You, you enjoy it. It can be fun to acquire things. It's like, oh, check me out what I found. I, I spent decades of my life doing that. But then it piled up and it didn't feel good anymore. It felt like too much. So then I slowly started to get rid of what I didn't want. And then what I realized is I want much less than I used to because I feel good more often than I used to back in the day. There we go. Um, sea of body doubles by filming things. I love it. Um, I hear Beth's voice and I start to clean. I just cleaned the stove top. Okay, teacher, awesome. I feel like a bit of Pavlov's dog here or maybe I'm the bell. Who's the dog in this scenario? <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But what I want to, I would love for you, this is what my hope for you, is that the words I say with my voice, you start hearing them, the words I say in your voice. You start telling yourself in your voice, your co-pilot, your coach voice, your voice of encouragement, to say it to yourself. It's almost like learning something, like when my husband started learning to be a musician, he of course was singing in a way and playing in a way that he had heard other people do it. You do it often enough, then you become, you develop your own style. You develop your own way of doing things and you, don't, you sound less like Rick Nielsen and Robin Zander and you know Ace Fraley or whatever and more like yourself. So I'm cool with you using me as a temporary way to learn how to do these things. I don't mind it, but I also don't want, I don't want you to be only able to do this with me around. I want you to be able to learn and absorb these things, okay? This is not about me being hierarchical. It's about me helping you out and then being an awesome person and pushing you out of the nest when you're ready and then you fly, okay? I love it. Kat Roby says, I worked my way back to 4224 in TikToks yesterday. Kept me declutter company. Awesome. There we go. We got the ADHD people in the house. I think I attract them because I, you know, look at how many times I'm like, oh, look, we got something delivered. Oh, I'm going to sing a song. Who are we? Oh, I'm getting distracted. But I can always, I've practiced then refocusing, not allowing the distraction, the squirrel to let me totally go down that road or else I'd be out here getting, oh, pardon me. I'll just go get the thing from Amazon and then I'll go do this and I'll do that. I'm leaving you here. No, practicing coming back to what's important. And to me right now, what's important is you. I'm a decluttering life coach. I love helping people and I also love showing people that this is what I do for a living and I'm good at it. So if you want me to be your one-on-one -on -one coach, if you want to spend an hour and it's just you and me talking pretty much as we're doing right now because I only coach people on Zoom, this is what I do. If you want me to yourself, if you want to have, you know, it's kind of like having a, a private audience or whatever, this is what I do. I get paid for it and many people think it's time and money well spent because it's an investment in yourself. Okay, you know? Um, yeah, we have to process. So notice miracles and money. Notice your, your, your word right there. We have to process the words in my head, but I spent a lot of money on this. Yeah, you did. Oh, well. Oh, well, you spend a lot of money on it. Did you learn something about it? Sometimes we learn, I'll never do that again. You know, I spent a lot of money on that dress and I only wore it once. Okay, well, I can do a couple of things. I can wear that dress again, or I can learn that I don't wear my clothes as frequently as I thought, so I will spend less money on clothes in the future. Learn something from your mistakes, okay? And I say mistakes because as soon as you're learning from something from them, it isn't a mistake. Learn from what didn't work out for you. That is an investment. The money you spent taught you that lesson. Then if you learn about that and you never do it again, it was money well spent. Choose to think that way. Okay, there we go. Sarah Larkin joined a doubling online community called Flow Club. It does have a cost, however. So yeah, sometimes myself included, spending money helps you get what you want. You want an online community called Flow Club? You want people to be there at the ready to body double with you? You got to pay money for it. I know myself, and I think I've said for people who've been around for a while, you know that I am on this kind of, not even health journey, but I am postmenopausal. My body is different than it was even five to 10 years ago. And I realized that I need to do some strength training or I should do, be, do, I should be doing more stuff for my, my, my uh, what do you call it, my health. 
when I leave myself to it, I don't show up as well as I do when I pay a place to go take a class at a certain time, I show up. When I leave myself, when I'm left to my own devices, as the pet shop boys would say, I probably won't. There are certain things that are easy for me to be self-motivated on. There are other times when I need to pay somebody for external motivation and to pay so that I show up at a regular basis to get the result I want. That's what coaching is like. That's why if you think about it, I'm kind of like a coach at the Y. I'm your, but I'm not coaching a whole class. I am your personal trainer for coaching, for, excuse me, for clutter. Look at it that way. You pay for a personal trainer at the gym when you don't do it yourself. There's no harm or foul in that. So just notice there's different ways of thinking about this. You know, hell's bells, love it. There are boxes for my pay past too painful to open. I still hang on to them, but notice, you're not just feeling the pain when you open the box. Your brain has x-ray specs. You have x-ray specs. You know when you look at that box when it's not even open, you have the thought, it's going to be painful for me to open that, but you already feel the pain right then. Hanging on to a box of pain just keeps that pain in your life. You can do something else about it, though. You can. You can face the pain. Face the fear or do it anyway. I don't like to white knuckle that shit, but what I will say is you may be surprised. You could open up that box and that you've been afraid of. You could find something cool in there. You could find something that you're like, I don't even know why I kept this. Yes, there may be things. That, there will be things when you are decluttering that you will find in your home that will cause you to feel feelings. Some of the feelings you feel may be feelings you are afraid to feel. You are afraid, you're fearful of feeling pain, sadness, loss, grief. But those are part of the human experience. In order for you to be a well-rounded human being, round like the earth, joy and pain, sunshine and rain. If you're not, if you're only on the good side, you're missing out on half of it. And sometimes the sweet stuff is tastes even sweeter when you, you know that it's countered by the bitter. It's that yin-yang. It's the balance. But I want to share with you that when you are afraid of something, it may not be as bad as you think. It may not be as bad as you think. And if it makes you feel an emotion, then feel the emotion. Cry. Go walk, drive through that rainstorm. Get on the other side of it. You will feel better after you cry. Maybe not immediately because you're all puffy and you get snot running down your nose and you're going. <laughs> but when you calm down from a cry, you inevitably feel better because your body is getting rid of it doesn't what it doesn't want. It is processing probably emotion that it could be decades old. But get it out of you. And once you get it out of you, you're going to look at that box of stuff and be like, you know what? It's just a freaking handkerchief and some quarters. I can get rid of that. But if you don't go through it, if you, see, if you see the rainstorm and you start to divert, you're always going to be on the sidelines. You're never going to be moving forward. You're always going to stop at a certain point and turn. Stopping, oh no, there's a rainstorm and the rainstorm will show up again. Nope, that's staring. I'm turning it this way. So it's okay to feel afraid of feeling feelings. So set it up so that maybe you're going through that at a time you're feeling okay. In a room that you know, you're alone or you're with company. How can you make it easier for you to just even open that box? Even opening the box is a big deal. Congratulate yourself on it. Pick one item out. Feel the feeling. Make a decision. When you're not feeling, when you're feeling like, okay, that was enough, you stop. But then you go back another time, okay? This is what coaching helps you with. This is what I do. This is what I can help you with, okay? Hey there, Jeannie for Jeannie. Um, yeah, soaring butterfly. My folks have so much stuff that they can't even open a window easily. Yeah, notice when you have too much stuff, how it affects your life. Can't even open a window, no fresh air. Notice Soaring Butterfly is saying, you know, I don't want that for myself, but notice that we are gonna have to, even if we can't help, or still looking at ourselves, we're gonna have to help people with clutter either while they're alive or when they're dead. If you have good clutter habits, yourself it will be easier for you to deal with somebody else's stuff but if you don't know how to do it for yourself it's going to be so much more difficult to help somebody else with it i know this and this is why 
I have been good, kind of good at this all my life because I grew up in a cluttered home and I didn't like that feeling. I couldn't find stuff. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't find the good stuff. I couldn't use it and there was no place to put it away and I wasn't encouraged to, so I just left it there. I realized I didn't like that feeling and it took me decades to change. I want to give you a shortcut. I show up as a shortcut in your life. Use me for why I show up, you know? But notice, I also can much more easily look at my aging mother in her giant house full of stuff and I'm not triggered by it. I'm like, yeah, when you're dead, I, I literally say to her, yeah, Ma, don't worry about that. When you're dead, I'll deal with it. Spend your time right now doing something that's important to you. So notice, when you can do it for yourself, you can help other people better than when you try to help them if you don't know how to do it yourself. How could I teach you how to drive a car if I don't know how to drive myself? Okay. Miss Seashell's working on the basement today. I've done the spare room and a shed this summer. Check you out. All righty. Love this. All right. I'm going to back up here because I got some stuff. Um, Susan says, Susan Broderick, Sue Broderick. Now when I start to feel overwhelmed, I hear you say, chunk it down. Yes, it's got the word down in it. Chunk it down. If I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm looking at it too big. I'm going on a road trip. I just need to get from here to Palm Springs, but I'm looking at the whole entire country. I'm looking at it and I'm looking at it from this distance. But when I slow down and calm down and chunk down, and I say, if I want to drive to Palm Springs, I know that at least today I could probably get from here to Pittsburgh. And I'm going to enjoy the drive. I'm going to get to Pittsburgh. I'm going to stay in a nice hotel. I'm going to call my friends. I'm going to have a, a tiki drink. I'm going to eat some something good. Permonte Brothers, maybe. Nah, something better. And I'm going to have fun on the way there. I'm going to have fun when I've stopped. And then the next day, I will have had a good night's sleep. And I'm going to say, okay, from Pittsburgh, what's my chunk today? Oh, you know what? How about Columbus, Ohio? Yeah, Columbus, I'll go. And to me, I lather, rinse, repeat. I want to stay in a nice hotel. I want to drink something tasty and eat something tasty. I might want to get together with friends and get a good night's sleep. And then I wake up the next day and I lather, rinse, repeat. And every day, notice I'm not in Pennsylvania anymore. I'm now in halfway through Ohio. And then I do the same thing over and over again, getting closer and closer to my destination. Think of it like a road trip, chunk it down and have fun while you're doing it and enjoy when you stop and enjoy getting started again. Okay. Um, I love it. Miracles and Money said, while charging the car, I donated almost everything that I had packed in the car for a road trip. Interesting. All right. Yeah. You know what? Soaring Butterfly they are having your, your, your family. And here's the thing. I can only have empathy and sympathy for people who are cluttered of all generations because I've worked on myself and they are struggling internally, but there are generations that came before us that were not allowed. They did not feel safe to share their struggles. They were told to just white knuckle it, bootstraps, suck it up buttercup. But notice how this has repercussions. Notice that they started collecting things to maybe make their human uh, ner nervous systems feel safe. If they came from lack, if they came from the Great Depression, they didn't have a lot. I'm going to keep this and this and this and it feels good. Yay, I feel safe. I will never be without potatoes again. I will get the, the toys that I never got as a kid. I'm going to have fun collecting all this stuff. But the stuff piles up if you keep it. And then that doesn't feel good either. They are going through their own stuff. You wish your folks would do this, both cleaning out their house, but I say this soaring butterfly, how about you working on yourself now? How about you practicing on your clutter so what you then can better say, hey, you know what I learned from this wacky lady on TikTok? Let's talk about this. I, she said that there are three layers of clutter. There's surface, stored, and sentimental. Can I help you with your surface clutter? What is that? Stuff that you want to get put in the trash. Is there anything you want put in the trash? I can do it for you. You know, every little bit helps. But also know that, honestly, this is going to sound harsh. You will not change some people. You cannot change anybody else. It's hard enough to train, change yourself. Sometimes it's going to be easier for you to wait till they're dead and then deal with their stuff. If they don't want to change, again, where's my little ropey person? Mrs. Roper, get it? Rope. <laughs> is you want them to change, they don't. So there's tension. Let it go. Know that sadly, they're gonna be dead at some point and then you'll clean out their house. Enjoy the time you have with them. Don't make it so tense. I make an effort to enjoy time with my mother when I go up to Massachusetts and help her with her house. I'm already making plans for us to go out to lunch. 
I'm helping with her, her clutter, no big deal. And I also reassure her that it's okay the way she is because I'm not going to change her mind. I will deal with this stuff when she's dead, some of this stuff. But some of the stuff that's important to me, the family, the family heirlooms and stuff, that I want to know where they are and that they're safe, that's important to me. I'm taking care of that now so I feel safe in case she doesn't die for another 18 years. Hope that helps. Okay. Um, yeah, I love it. Mary says, I thought as I was getting stuff done for the dog, how you say, think about the life you want. Everybody, think about the life you want. You know? Yeah. Cat Mama says, did my mom, she refused to part with anything, yelled at me. Yeah, it, it's not worth it sometimes. You know? Um, uh, I'm building an uncluttered life. I've been minimal my whole life. Yeah, love it. Cat is saying, just learned that a buffalo's run into the storm so it lasts a shorter time. Yeah, notice that. Here's the storm. You can hang out in the rain or you can run through it and get on the other side. And the other side is where all the good stuff happens. Okay? Yeah. And Sarah Martin says, this is resonating for me and it's not even clutter-related thing. You know why? This is how I coach. I would get bored out of my gourd, as my family would say, if all I did was tell you about putting your Cheerios in a clear box. No. This is bigger than clutter. This is why I'm a decluttering life coach. I'm helping you declutter your life and that includes the thoughts in your head. If it's resonating with you, that's wonderful because it's supposed to because it's on different levels. Surface, stored, and sentimental. Okay? Um, I love this. T. Prada says, It took me almost 10 years to shred my divorce papers. When I was done, I felt freedom and relief. But notice... It may have taken you 10 years to get ready for it, or you might have been ready for it earlier. Think of how soon can you get rid of something that you don't want so you feel that freedom and relief years earlier. Next time that happens, when you have something, say, how quickly can I get rid of this feeling so I just feel freedom and relief? All right? Um, oops, we had a bunch of messages, but we only got like a minute left. Okay. Mayor says you got to get to work. I do too. All right. So nice. I miss my mom. Yeah. Hug your mom. Love her memories. You know? Yeah. Don't argue with parents. Keep the peace because they'll be dead sooner rather than later. Erin, totally. Totally. You know? And then knowing you have a plan. Knowing you have a plan in the future to say, I know I can deal with this stuff when it, you're dead and it's going to be easier. You know? Here's a fun thing. Now, Stuckies, I know Stephanie Stucky, okay? She's an awesome lady. I say, Blanche, this is what you do. Go to Stuckies, buy some pecans or pecans, eat them because that supports the company. You don't need the little tchotchkes. And I'm a freaking tchotchke. I'm a recovering souvenir collector. Stop, buy the thing that is consumable so it doesn't clutter up your life and then move along the way, you know? Yep. Notice, Marianne wasn't even of the Depression era. She has a mother from the Depression era. And you keep everything because of the way your mother was. We are all informed by the generations prior. You are a generation right now. Who do you want to be? And how can you positively impact the future generations? You can be the person who, didn't, who allowed everybody to just empty out your stuff after you were dead. You know, who do you want to be? in your family tree? Do you want to be the person that couldn't let go of everything? Or do you want to be the person who changed the narrative for you and the next generations? You know? Yeah. Mary has been trying to help her mom organize. It's a nightmare. My sister doesn't help. Then don't do it. Don't do it. Don't poke at the bee's nest if the bees don't want to move. You're just making yourself get stung. But do this. Look at your own clutter. Look at the stuff in your parents' house and say, do I want any of that in my house? If you do, make a plan for it now. If you don't, make a plan for it now. Where is it going to go after they're dead? Make a plan, people. Okay? Yeah. I. You know what? My mother, it's going to be so much easier to declutter her house, and she knows this. But I also don't want to, I want to enjoy the time I have with them. Okay? Okay. Miracles and money. I just want to offer this to you. Just think about this. I am forcing myself to get rid of things before I am ready. And I'm okay with it eventually. That's an approach. And if it's working for you, use it. But what I want to offer is, let me just make sure I don't have anything. No, I, got, I can talk for like a minute. Get rid of the husband. Mm, could be a thing. Notice when you're forcing yourself versus when it just happens easy, more easily. Why is it a force? 
Why are you doing it before you're ready? Why don't you wait till you're ready? What's wrong with waiting till you're ready and making it easier? You know, and why do you have to be okay with it eventually? How about slowing it down? No force, no before I'm ready. How about do it at the right time when it feels ready and it feels good now? Just want to offer that, you know? Now, we could do a lot, you know? I We could do a lot right now with this, but just think. We've got the brain, you've got your cogs turning. Today, when you're going through your life, notice when you have the opportunity to allow something an item to come into your house. Are you going to add to the clutter and feel good about it? Or are you going to say thank you but no and say no thank you? Is there something today you're going to come across through your going through your life that you're like, I can let go of this now, and then you take the next step. You put it in a box or a bag for recycling or trash or um, donating. Start doing the things that are going to get you the life you want. Start doing them today. Okay? Yeah. The immediate visual improvement can help, but you can also stage things in different areas. The visual improvement, I'm all about that. But notice the improvement you feel here. Connect up those so it looks good and it feels good. This is why I coach, okay? I have to scoot because speaking of coaching, I get a busy day of coaching and consultations. I want to share this with you. If you want me to be your one-on-one -on -one coach, this week I have some consultation slots available. Go to my website, Destination Decluttered, you're going to find them. Next week, I have no consultations because I'm traveling. And then the week after that, holy, no, the week after that, I'll have some. But I'm just saying, if you want me to be your coach, grab me while you can because my calendar is going to fill up. Not in a fearful way, but in a way of encouraging you to do something that will help you get to where you want to go. Now, I get a scoot, speaking of where I want to go, but I'll see you tomorrow when I do a TikTok Live. ID Princess, nice to see you, and thank you for telling people I'm great to work with. It was great to work with you as well. Okay, now I'm going to go do some fun stuff and I hope you do too. Bye.